Welcome to my notes Oracle DB YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about what is a replication, what are the types of replication available in PostgreSQL, how does the streaming replication works, how we are going to configure the streaming replication. Once you configured how to verify the streaming replication, each and everything we are going to see in detail. First of all, what is a replication? A replication is a process of copying a data from one server to another server which ensures high availability, fault tolerance and other benefits. Let's assume you have a critical database which contains almost 10 years of your data on the same server which is deployed on Oregon region. Now your management is asking one particular client how much sales has been done last 5 years. If you are going to execute that particular query on your production server, you may face the performance issue. The second scenario, region issue or any hardware issue, a disaster happened on the production side, you may face the downtime. In order to avoid that, we are copying a data and maintaining to the another region. In our case, we can consider as a North Virginia, which means you are uh, reporting queries has been executed on the standby server. Second thing, in case of failures or uh, disaster happen on your primary side, you can bring up your standby server as a primary, so which helps to reduce your downtime. And Postgres supports two types of replication. One is physical or streaming replication. This replicates the entire database cluster from one server to another server through the wall files. The another method is logical replication. This replicates the data at the table or database level using publish subscribe model which means the subscriber would receive the data through the publisher. How does the streaming replication works? Let's assume you have written some data or you have done some changes on your production site. All your changes has been written into your wall files which contains of all your data modifications. The primary server, wall sender process streams that wall records to the standby server wall receiver over a network connection. Now, the standby server applies the wall records as they are received, keep it as database content synchronized with primary in real time. So that even though if your primary goes down, you can as soon as possible, you can bring up your standby as a primary. And also, streaming replication can operate two modes. One is Synchronous mode, another one is asynchronous mode. Synchronous mode in the sense, the primary wait for the confirmation that wall has written at least one of the standby before committing into the transaction. But in the asynchronous mode, it is a default mode which is doesn't expect any commits on the standby server which focus only on the primary server. So, even though the standby is not available, it doesn't care about it. And also, as a pre-request, if you are going to configure the streaming replication, the OS level should be exactly same as a primary and standby. And also, the DB server version also would be exactly same from primary and standby. So, the first step, we know that so we have to install the database server as exactly as the same. So for this demo, I am going to use the Docker container and my primary and standby in the same server. The next step is we have to enable some parameters on the primary side. The first parameter is listen address. This parameter which helps to listen for your connections from the client application. So what I will do, I 
I'm going into the TG data directory. So Postgres configuration file. So once you have launched the server, you have to modify these changes. Since it is a fresh server, so I am going to enable this parameter and by default port is 5432. I am not going to touch this parameter and max wall connection is by default value 100. It's fine. And the next parameter is wall level. So we know that Postgres have a three method of wall level, minimal, replica and logical. So for the streaming replication, we have to always set replica. The another parameter is max wall sender. This particular parameter which helps to set up concurrent connections from a standby server for the replication. By default it is 10 only. I am not going to change this value. And has been renamed from the Postgres 13 onwards. And this value has been defined like wall keep size equal to number of wall files into the default size. So here for example if I want to keep the 10 wall files in the sense number of wall files equal to 10 and by default size is 16 MB. So 160 MB if I am going to assign this value for this wall keep size then under the PG wall directory it is going to maintain the last 10 wall files. So we have to define the size 160 MB. And also most of the time, if you are not enable this parameter in the transaction, the previous wall file has been deprecated. At the time, if your standby server may face the network issue or replication log, so that causes to your standby is going to be out of sync. To avoid that, what you have to do, you have to define this parameter and make sure you have provide that necessary value depends upon your application parameter is archive mode streaming replication requires that archive mode by default it is being de uh, disabled so we have to enable that archive mode so the next parameter is archive command which is the copy of wall files where we are keeping in the directory. So I am going to define this parameter cp percentage p is the path of the directory and where lib pgsql r dir. So after that I am going to put the file percentage f. So most of the time you have to define that exact directory name and the make sure the permission is properly is there or not. Otherwise your archive wall is not going to be happen. Let's verify the permissions as well. So the user and group are same and it has the permissions as well. Now we are good. Once you've done these changes, we can go to that slide. So the next thing is we have to make the entry of PGHPA. That's the over a network connection between the primary and standby. For that, we have to make an entry into the PGHPA file. So I will go to this PGHPA. So here you can define that if you have already created any role you can just provide at that replication and you can provide that. Now I am going to use this by default with the trust but in real time you have to define that which user is going to access the replication and from the which server that trust you have to provide. Once I have done, we need to do the restart the cluster because some of the parameters only applicable after the restart. 
so I am going to use the pgctl restart so your server is up you can just verify the status as well so you can see the data directory so which is restarted the step 4 also completed now we are going to configure the standby server you can access that now i am going to do the init db hyphen d where lib pg sql 14 so the standby server data directory is data 1 if you you are using a enterprise db or postgres server or pg sql any user if you want you you can just give hyphen u the username otherwise it will take the os user as a super user now i am going to just give that same thing so it will take as the postgres as a super user yes it's completed now you can just go to the data directory of standby where lib pg sql 14 data 1 in the method 1 you can just take the pg base backup from the primary side copy it from primary to target and you can modify this parameter manually then you can bring up the standby server the another method i am going to show you right now so what i am going to do i am going to just remove these files make sure you have deleted everything on this directory okay fine now we are going to use the pg base backup pg base backup hyphen hyphen help in your setup if your primary server resides on 100 your standby server resides on 105 so you have to connect your prime standby server and from the standby server you can use the pg base backup hyphen h your primary and you can mention the data directory then you can do this thing it will helps you to reduce your manual intervention so since we are using the primary and standby in the same server i am going to use this ip pg underscore base backup hyphen h so this ip address i'm just copying and pasting it you can see that options of pg base backup so here hyphen d mention it as a data directory for the pg data directory path so we know that the data directory where the copy has to be pg is 14 data 1 so once you copy the data directory mentioning that capital s sorry capital x yes the stream and in case we are going to use that iPhone capital R. So this is the major advantage of using this iPhone R, which automatically create that recovery dot corner file. So just and at the last option we are going to use the progress. Now it is completed you can just do that ls hyphen lrth and make sure this user and group have it is same okay it is fine the next step i am going to show the postgres dot auto dot kana file so here you can see the primary con info details the user and where the password file will be there and that which one is the host which means your primary IP and the port if it is enabled the SSL it will give the details everything you can see on the primary con info of postgres.auto.cona file and the next thing I am going to modify that port number because we are using the same 
database server for primary and standby as we know postgres supports and runs on only one port as a one cluster so we need to modify this particular standby port i'm going to modify this port number as 5433 so we done the setup now we are going to start the standby server for starting the standby server i am going to just source this port 5433 pg ctl hyphen d lib 14 data 1 So the cluster is started primary server so to make sure 5432 is our primary I am going to create a table int okay. so make sure the table is created I am going to insert some values on this particular table insert in yes the another row is okay the another row is football okay. totally I mean Three values inserted on my primary. Now I am going to connect my g equal iPhone P five four four three five three three show port. So you know very well five four three three is our standby server. Now I am going to just see that table table is present also you can just refer the data as well from this table sports so which contains of three rows our replication was configured and it's working fine so how to verify that replications so first thing which is you are log into your primary so you can verify the replication is working or not through these tips first one I am going to show that VG stat replication view so this view will provide the detail of which server is which file file is currently executing it and the default mode is async so you can see that details so in case if you are in a standby so how to verify that psql hyphen p5433 start all receiver to so you can see here it in the standby side it shows the status is streaming and you can see that what was the last wall files and which one is the sender port and you can see the connection details over here the another method is yes if and grab sender and can use receiver so if you are executing this ps grip sender and receiver at the os level also you can make sure that replication is working fine or not